Hi everyone, I'll be installing Linux Mint on a separate drive without using a USB drive or DVD. Installing it on a separate drive is a great option if you want to keep it isolated from Windows and it can also make the installation process feel less daunting. So let's get started. In Windows Disk Management, I have my first disk here. There's about 476 gigabytes. It's an SSD drive. And I have my second disk here. It's about 223 gigs and it's an NVMe drive. You don't have to use the entire drive. And in my case, I won't be deleting anything. I'll just be using some of the free space that's on it. As we can see here, there's 141 gigabytes free. In Linux Mint, you'll need a minimum of 20 gigabytes of free space. So I have more than enough free space here. And now I'm gonna go and download Linux Mint. Go to linuxmint.com and I go to download. And Linux Mint is available in three different flavors. You got Cinnamon, Sleek, Modern, and Innovative, XFCE, Light, Simple, and Efficient, and finally Made Edition, which is Classic and Traditional. And I'm gonna be downloading Cinnamon, the more modern version of Linux Mint. Download and scroll down and you'll see the mirrors and you can select your link. Once it's downloaded, go into your downloads folder and select the disk image, the ISO, and I'm gonna mount it. You can hit enter or right click and hit mount. Hit open. And this will mount it onto a virtual drive. In this case, it's the E drive. And if I check the properties on it, it's using about three gigabytes of space. Okay. I'm going to go back into disk management and we can see here it's been mounted and now I'm going to be creating some free space for the Linux Mint installation media. And so I'm going to be putting it on my first disk here and I'm going to be shrinking my C drive to make space and after the install I will be removing it. Select the C drive, right click, shrink volume, this will be three gigabytes, shrink, select the unallocated space, right click, new simple volume, next, 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 change the file system to FAT32, and I'll call this Mint ISO. Next, finish. All right, and it has been created. Going back into Explorer, and I'm gonna copy everything. Going into my F drive, and then paste. Going back into Disk Management, and the reason why I'm putting the installation media on my first disk here is because if I were to put it on my second disk, you'll most likely run into an issue during the installation. And the install media here, your BIOS should be able to boot from the installation media partition here. But if not, it's probably because it needs to be seen as an EFI system partition instead of a basic data partition. So it can be changed. I'm going to go into disk part, start. This part, run as administrator, yes, and list disk. So it's my first disk, disk zero, select disk zero, list my partitions, and it's partition number four, the three gigabyte partition. Select partition four. I'm gonna type in help set ID, and I'm gonna scroll up and look for the EFI system partition in hex. I'm going to copy and type in set ID equals and then paste. Enter. All right, it's been successfully set. And going back into disk management, we see it's been changed as well. So that's good. And now on my second disk, I'm going to make room for a Linux Mint itself. So I'm going to right click, shrink. And so Linux Mint requires at least 20 gigabytes of free disk space. So I'm gonna do 50 gigabytes, so more than enough. Shrink. All right, and there's my free space. Now I'm going to reboot my computer and go into the BIOS. In your BIOS, ensure that secure boot is disabled. And if you have fast boot, disable it as well. And now I'm gonna do a one-time boot into the installation partition. It's labeled as UFI OS. And how I can confirm that, go back into Windows, open up a command prompt as administrator, type in bcd edit space forward slash enum space firmware. And at the bottom, you can see that there's device partition F, the F drive that was created, and the description UFI OS. So I'm going to select it. 
All right, it's booted into the installation media partition. And we can see here it says start Linux Mint 22.1 Cinnamon 64 bit. So we're going to start it. All right, I'm in the live environment. I'm going to install Linux Mint. And the install window comes up. Continue. And your keyboard. Continue. Multimedia codecs. And these are required to play some video formats and to properly render some websites. Hit continue. Now there are three options here. Install Linux Mint alongside the Windows Boot Manager. You can erase your disk and install Linux Mint, which we don't want to do, and something else. Now if you pick the first option and you hit Install Now, and the window comes up here and it says it's going to select my NVMe drive, so that's good. It's selecting the right drive. And it's going to be creating two new partitions from the free space that I created earlier in Windows an EFI system partition for Linux Mint itself, and a partition for slash for root. So a very simple install. And then you can hit continue. But if you want to customize it and you want to confirm the disk that's gonna use, then you'll have to select the something else option. So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna hit go back. I'm gonna do something else. And then you'll notice that the continue button, it's grayed out. So what you can do is just hit back. And then hit continue again, select something else. I'm going to hit continue. And then here it's going to show all my disks and all the partitions on it. So for example, here's my NVMe drive. And then here it shows my first partition, my D drive. And then here's the free space I had, the 50 gigabytes. And then scroll down and then there's dev SDA, which is my SSD drive. And it has all the partitions for it the Windows EFI system partition, and then there's my NTFS partition, my C drive. So I'm gonna go back up. Here's my NVMe drive again, and I'm gonna select the free space. I'm gonna hit the plus, and I'm gonna create an EFI partition just for Linux Mint. And I'll do 512 megabytes. Use as EFI system partition, okay. It has been created. Go back to the free space, add. And this will be for swap. I have 12 gigs of RAM, so I'll do 12 gigs. Use as swap, hit OK. Scroll down, back to the free space, hit add. And for the rest of the free space, I'm going to use it for slash, for root. And if you want to divide the rest of the free space, for example, for like slash home, slash serve, slash op, et cetera. You can do that. But for me, I'm just gonna do the rest of the free space and then hit okay. All right, and we see it there. And at the bottom here, it says device for bootloader installation. You could just leave it as we've created an EFI system partition. So it's gonna put the boot files there and then hit install now. And it's gonna be installing on my NVMe drive. It's going to be creating an EFI system partition, a swap partition, and a slash partition. Hit continue. Select your location, hit continue. And then fill in your name, computer name, username, and password. I'm going to keep it so that it requires my password to log in. And at the bottom here, it says if you want to encrypt your home folder, so you can check it if you want. When ready, hit continue. All right, and it's installing, and you can go and click on the arrow here, and it'll show the status and you can click it to hide it again. All right, installation has finished. You can continue testing or restart now. Before I restart, I'm just gonna check the boot order. So I'm just gonna do continue testing. Open up a terminal. Type in EFI boot manager. And at the top, it shows the boot order. So I got zero, then three, four, two, then one. So zero, it says it will boot into Ubuntu. And the reason why it says Ubuntu is because Linux Mint is based off of Ubuntu. So when I restart, it should go directly into Ubuntu. But to make sure, I'm going to go into the BIOS to confirm. It's going to reboot. So we can see here in my boot options, boot option number one is Windows, even though earlier we saw that it should be booting into Ubuntu. Option number two is the UFI OS, and number three is Ubuntu. So I'm going to put Ubuntu as number one and then I'll save changes and exit. All right, it's booted into Grub, 
which is the boot manager. And then there's Linux Mint and there's the Windows boot manager. So it's detected Windows as expected. So that's good. And now I'm going to go into Linux Mint. Log in. All right, and the welcome screen comes up for Linux Mint. I'm going to close it. And now I'm going to reboot my computer to ensure I can get back into Windows. Okay, Grub comes up. Select Windows. All right, able to get into Windows. Log in. Going to open up Disk Management. And now we see here on my second disk, so here are the three partitions that were created for the Linux Mint. The EFI partition, swap partition, and this is slash. And now for my first disk, this is the installation media partition, and I no longer need it, so I can delete it. And you'll notice if you right click, delete volume is grayed out. So we're going to delete that in disk part, open up disk part as administrator. Yes. List my disk. Select disk zero. List my partitions. And then it's partition number four. Type delete partition override. And we see it has been deleted. And now I can extend my C drive. So that's it. That's how you can install Linux Mint on a second drive without using a USB drive or a DVD. I hope this video was useful and I thank you for watching. Bye now.